Hey guys, uh, today we're going to take a look at a, another classic gaming console. And uh, for those of you that don't already know, this is the Sega Master System. Now this is the original model. Um, like many video game consoles, there's different revisions. Uh, there were two in the US for the Master System, and this is the original model. And uh, basically what this was, this was Ninten or Sega's competition for the original NES. Um, so, uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s, the system was out. Uh, I didn't get mine at launch or anything like that. I remember I, I got one kind of late in the game. Uh, I had an NES, and I think at one point my mom ended up t was talking to, to uh, some employee at like EB Games, and somehow the, the, the Master System came up, and my mom knew that, you know, I was collect. I wasn't really collecting then. I was a kid, but like I had all kind of. Con I just loved having the different consoles, and I guess you know this was. Um, you know the system was already kind of on its way out at the time. And anyways, I specifically remember she she bought it for like fifty dollars off this guy at at EB Games. It wasn't like sold in the store. He just kind of like told her that he had one and. He went home and got it, and she came back, and they arranged to meet. And anyways, she got me this uh, Master System. It was a Model One, kind of like this, and uh, it had like a bunch of games with it, maybe five or six games. But anyways, yeah, at the time I didn't really appreciate it much. I was an NES guy, but um, it was a pretty cool system. wasn't super popular in the United States. Uh, it wasn't even very popular in Japan. Uh, if if I'm remembering correctly, I think they actually released more games for it in the U.S. than they did in Japan. Um, it was very popular in Europe, though, um, and I believe Brazil. Uh, it was also very popular, but it, it was kind of like the it, it was switched in Europe, where the Master System was kind of the more popular system, and the NES was kind of the underdog. So it was kind of a switched from what the situation was uh, here in the United States. But uh, interesting system, uh, actually. Technically, I believe it's a little more powerful than the NES. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily better graphics, but I know it can display more colors at once on the screen than the NES can. I believe it's a very slightly faster CPU as well, um, maybe even more RAM. Um, but yeah, you can tell that in a couple of the games that, you know, it is kind of a more powerful system. But again, it, it just didn't have the third party support. Uh, Nintendo had really a stranglehold on third parties at the time, and the Master System really suffered for it. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this because you know this this isn't exactly a rare console. A um, little un, you know uncommon in the U.S. Maybe not even uncommon, but it's just mm, kind of I don't know the word I'm looking for. But it's definitely not rare, and there's plenty of information on this. So we're just gonna I'm kind of briefly going over it, and then I'm going to tell you uh, show you the point really of this video, which is a nice little mod that I've done to it that some of you may be interested in. But yeah, sort of reminiscent of the NES controller, very simple, uh, you know, that brick style controller, two buttons. Uh, interesting, <laughs> there's a hole right there that you can actually screw in a little stick, like a joystick. Um, card, it takes cartridges, uh, top loading cartridges, but there are also some budget games that were like cards, kind of like credit cards, almost like uh, Turbo Graphics games that went there. Um, pause button is on the console itself, very strange, and the reset button right here. I always thought this weird, like, technical looking diagram right here was very odd as a kid. Uh, there's the power light, a green LED. Nice change up from the usual uh, red and sometimes blue. So that's green. Um, that's about it. Weird little diagram. Um, anyways, but what I wanted to talk about, really, with this system is the FM mod. You'll notice there's a little switch on the back. You'll notice there's a little switch on the back here. Um, I'm going to talk about this mod. So, uh, first I'm going to tell you why uh, there, I did a mod for it. Now, as usual in the US, we got screwed when it came to consoles. And the Japanese version of the Master System had FM sound, where we only got PSG I uh, forget exactly what PSG stands for at the moment, um, but I mean PSG sound isn't bad. Uh, you know, some people even prefer it to FM, but technically the FM is sort of superior sounding, or at least different sounding. And um, in Japan, there were a couple options. I believe they, there was an FM add-on that you could add on, and then they also came out. It, 
with a revision where it was like built in. Um, I actually have one of the units back home in my storage unit. That's a Japanese unit with a built-in FM sound. Um, look, pretty much looks exactly the same as the U.S. version here with the built-in sound one. Um, unfortunately, they're a little pricey, and I don't even think those are very common in Japan. But uh, I'm not quite sure on that. I, I got mine a while ago, and I had a friend in Japan, so I got it for a good deal. Um, this one, though, I picked up recently. I did have a Master System with me, and and I really had a hankering to play some, some Master System games. So I picked up this unit, and then I found out about a really cool mod. And I'm going to link, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description, but uh, this, I believe it's an Australian company or guy that you can get these off of. And it's a real simple mod. I'm not a, I'm not a soldering master or anything, um, but I was able to do this mod pretty easily. It does require a little bit of soldering. Um, so I'll show you some images, because I don't feel like opening this thing up right now. But I did uh, take pictures when I did the mod for my blog. So you can check out the blog for a little bit more detail. But um, I'll just show you some pictures of the mod on this machine. But it's pretty cool, because what it actually does is it adds uh, FM. It's kind of like an FM module. So with this little switch, you get the option of uh, FM for games that support it. So let's take a okay, look at that. So here's the little add-on FM module itself. Um, it connects to the card connector in the back of the Master System, the little expansion connector. And then there's a cable uh, do it that you're going to have to solder, like a wire uh, you can see on the left. Um, that will have to go to some solder points. Um, there's also a little jumper thing for a little the, the switch that you connect to it uh, to switch between uh, FM and PSG. Okay, so here's the master system opened up, and I've highlighted the two areas that are going to concern us for the mod. The edge connector up there in the upper right, and the area right in uh, red, that's going to be where we're going to be doing our soldering. Okay, so if you see C37, that capacitor, uh, first we're going to need to remove that, and then as you see to the left, the area I scratched off a little bit, you're going to have to scratch off a little bit of the board there. Uh, to, op to make it bare, uh, that's going to be where our ground wire is going to connect. Okay, so here's the wire soldered in. Uh, take note of the red and the white. Uh, if you don't get them backwards, uh, that it won't work if you get the red and the white wire backwards. Um, so yeah, very simple soldering job. Just three points that you have to solder. Um, here it is. I've cleaned it up a little bit, secured it with some uh, some glue and some electrical tape. Probably not the best or cleanest job in the world. I'm not the best soldering person, but uh, it works. It's worked for me for many months now. Um, I had to modify the uh, RF shield a little bit uh, so the card will fit in the back. And uh, there's just a picture of the switch that I cut a little, little hole and uh, fastened the switch to it. All right, so I'm just kind of freestyle it here with the, showing you this. Um, I'm just going to show you the mod, or you know, the FM sound and the difference. Um, I could do direct capture, but uh, this should work just fine. Now I have it hooked up to my PVM, of course. Uh, thankfully, unlike the NES, the Master System outputs RGP or RGB uh, natively. You just need a. Uh, it uses the same connector as on the back as the Model One Genesis. So if you have a a Model One. Uh, RGB SCART or RGB 21 uh, connector, it should work fine with the Master System. Um, now the game we're going to test here is Fantasy Star because it, it has both. It can do the FM and also the uh, PSG. Or, um, and you may notice that that's not Fantasy Star in there. Well, that's just the generic. I have a flash cart and I put it in a generic case, so uh, that is why. So. Now I'm going to first, let me put the switch in the middle. Okay, so first uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to, I have it set, the switch set to output um, PSG. So this is just what we would have heard, you know, with a stock American console. This is what most of us in America are used to with Fantasy Star, so. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off, 
and then I'm gonna flip the switch to the FM. Now this is the FM. Uh, this we would have only heard, uh, you know, if you had a Japanese console uh, with with an either the FM module or the integrated FM. So it's kind of that long Sega intro again, the logo, <laughs> and then you'll hear this. Seems like a little bit more drums in this. So I think that c came through okay, even with the cruddy, sp well, the cruddy uh, microphone on this camera. But yeah, that's that's basically that easy. Just a little switched back and forth. There's a a third position. Um, I believe that's there's a couple games that require it to be in Japanese region mode uh, to play the FM. And that's what the third switch position is. Um, if you soldered up for that as well. But yeah, anyways, yeah. There's that. It's a very simple mod. Um, definitely worth it. Uh, the little FM module from Australia, the guy in Australia, it's not that expensive. Um, geez, I think it was like f maybe $45 with shipping. Um, easy to do, even if you're a novice soldering. Definitely worth it. You know, it's cool, at least if you're into sound. Um, I know some people prefer the PSG uh, sound to the FM, but I think the FM's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching.